Harry arrives at a small town with nefarious intentions, only to get entangled in the lives of his boss's conniving wife and his beautiful but troubled young colleague. Harry arrives in a small town in Texas and tries to buy some alcohol from a bar. However, the owner asserts that she can't serve any until the afternoon. She directs her to another establishment, which is apparently a gentleman's club. Uninterested, he leaves after enjoying his drink. His attention is diverted when a pretty woman passes by on her way to the used car dealership across the club. As he walks into the area, he notices the salesman, Lon, talking to a hesitant customer, Mr. Haynes. Unable to make the sale, Lon leaves the customer with a calling card. Once the salesman's gone, Harry introduces himself to Mr. Haynes, pretending to be another salesman. The owner, George, notices Harry seemingly convincing the customer to buy a vehicle. The man then enters the office to prepare Mr. Haynes' paperwork. George complains that he's not selling one of his cars, but Harry points out that he just did before returning to Mr. Haynes. Despite the rudeness, George can't help but be impressed with his new salesman. Having secured a job, Harry stays in town and books a room at an inn. He arrives at work the next day, and George immediately orders him to accompany their loan assistant to collect from a client who missed his payments. Harry refuses as he is a salesman, not an errand boy. However, when he learns that their loan assistant is Gloria, the pretty woman he saw yesterday, he agrees to accompany her. The two head to their client's rundown residence but find no one's home. To this, Gloria volunteers to go to the stream nearby to see if the man's there, though she insists on going alone. Soon, she returns and assures Harry that the man has paid his debt already. At that moment, however, the client, Sutton, arrives, revealing that Gloria is lying. Quickly, the woman goes to Sutton and speaks to him privately, raising Harry's curiosity. She then goes straight to their vehicle to return to town without an explanation. Suspicious, Harry pulls over the car in the middle of nowhere and pulls Gloria into a kiss. She doesn't react to this, so he jokes that Sutton must be so charming that she has to go to him twice. Gloria then admits that she lied about getting the payments earlier but refuses to say more. Still, Harry wonders if she is related to Sutton, so he apologizes for misjudging her. As they return to town, they pass by a restaurant on fire. When they return to the dealership, George asks if they repossess Sutton's car already. Instead, Gloria reveals that the man paid for this month, and her boss laments that they'll have to go back to the man next month to collect his payment. Given that Harry didn't tell on her, Gloria later mounts thank you to him as he heads out to lunch. On his lunch break, the new salesman goes to the bank but finds that no one's there. As he searches around, a blind man named Mort enters, searching for the manager. He is concerned about the fire he's been hearing about, so Harry clarifies that the incident is at the hamburger joint. With that, Mort leaves. Finally, the bank manager, Julian, emerges from the restroom. He explains that his staff are volunteer firefighters so they're helping out with the incident. The manager even mentions that their security system isn't installed properly, so he's lucky that Harry isn't a bank robber. However, when the man isn't amused by his joke, Julian proceeds to ask what he needs. With that, Harry tells the manager that he wants to open an account. After their transaction, the man views an alarm clock from a store across the street from the bank before returning to the car shop. While George is away, his gorgeous wife, Dolly, discreetly parks her car at his shop to meet the new salesman. She asks Harry to help her carry some things, and the man accepts. As he prepares to leave, his eyes linger on Gloria and her adorned shoes before he gets into Dolly's car. Noticing his gaze, Dolly notes that she has a similar pair of shoes as if to hint that they're the only things that make Gloria attractive. The man soon helps carry boxes into the rundown building across from the bank. As they leave, the lovely wife hints at what Harry can do in town before driving back to the shop. Given the turn of events, Harry contemplates his next moves that evening. The following day, Lon tells his co-worker that their boss is out hunting for the weekend, claiming that he needs a break. Harry assumes that the man is avoiding his wife, and Lon agrees, given the couple's rocky relationship. Coincidentally, Dolly calls the office and asks Harry to deliver her husband's cap to their home. Despite his suspicions, the salesman does as he's told. As he parks by his boss's home, he notices a neighbor watching him through binoculars. Still, he goes to meet Dolly. The wife immediately flirts with him, even offering him a drink. However, when Harry suddenly kisses her, she refuses, noting that her neighbor is likely watching them. She tells him to leave, though she gives mixed signals as she continues to use a sultry tone, hinting at her attraction to the man. That afternoon, Harry chances upon Gloria at a store, so he invites her for a drink. He uses the opportunity to apologize for kissing her and making accusations about her and suddenly the other day, Gloria accepts his apology, so the man invites her to go on a ride with him. The woman refuses, claiming that she has to go somewhere. Despite this, Harry insists on going with her, so Gloria has no choice but to take the man to the home of another client who missed her payments. The woman was the mother of Gloria's best friend who passed away last year. She highlights how the woman practically raised her and helped many people in the neighborhood, so she is helping her in turn. Later that night, Harry sneaks into his boss's house and finds the alluring dolly prepared for him in bed. The two spend the night together, though Harry immediately gets ready to leave after. The woman tries to tempt him into staying, but the man mocks her promiscuity. 
This offends Dolly, though she smiles in satisfaction when he leaves. In his room that evening, Harry rigs the alarm clock he bought and places it in a box. Afterward, he visits the gentleman's club, only to find Dolly waiting for him in one of the cars outside. With a passerby approaching, Harry quickly gets into the car with her to hide. Dolly uses the closeness to tempt Harry again, leading to the two having another intimate time. Eventually, the woman is satisfied enough to leave. However, Sutton sees Harry walking off their secret rendezvous, surprising him. After this, the man sets up the box he prepared at the rundown building across the bank. The next day, he goes to work as usual while waiting for his trap to trigger. At around noon, just after his boss goes out to lunch, the alarm clock goes off and starts a fire at the abandoned building, prompting firefighters to intervene. Seeing this, Harry tells Lon that he'll check out the fire and leaves. Instead, the man sneaks into the bank while the staff's away to tend to the burning building. With the place empty, he makes the sinks and toilets in the restroom overflow, luring Julian to check on it. Once the man heads in, Harry covers him with a blanket and binds him, ensuring that he doesn't see his face. Afraid, Julian immediately tells him the safe's combination, allowing the thief to clear out the cash from the establishment. Before he can escape, Mort returns to speak with the manager, so the thief struggles to slip away from the blind man. After hiding the bag of money in his trunk, Harry joins the crowd of onlookers and starts helping out and killing the fire. However, a homeless man is apparently inside the building. Guilty, Harry goes to save the man, earning him admiration from the townsfolk. Late that afternoon, Harry buries the bag of stolen money in the woods. He stays in town longer to avoid suspicion, even taking Gloria on a picnic in the woods. They enjoy their time at the lake, where Harry grows more interested in the woman. He even earns a kiss from her when he drops her off that night. As he's heading back to his car, Harry is confronted by deputies who invite him to the sheriff's office. There, he's questioned about the bank robbery, with the sheriff noting how the man learned about the place's lack of security from the manager. Harry uses his assistance with the fire as his alibi, but the sheriff comments that the only time people noticed him was when he saved the homeless man, which was after the robbery. Because of this, he gets jailed for the night. Lucky for Harry, George calls the sheriff's office the next day, claiming that Dolly drove by the fire and saw their employee helping out the entire time. Despite their suspicions, the officers have no choice but to set Harry free. With that, they escort him back to his car, which is still parked outside Gloria's home. The woman checks in on him, so he assures her that he's gotten things straightened out with the authorities. Harry then offers her a ride to work, only to be interrupted by Sutton who wants to speak with Gloria alone. The man refuses to let her go with him, but the woman insists and leaves with a suspicious man. Gloria doesn't report to work later that day, making Harry worry. His attention is diverted when Dolly calls him, insisting on meeting tonight. The man refuses, but she threatens to retract her statement to the police and ruin his alibi. With no choice, Harry meets Dolly by the sawmill that evening. However, the woman wants to assert her command over him, so she teasingly refuses his advances and swims at the nearby lake to lead him on. Their playful chase ends when Harry finds the woman in an abandoned building, having prepared a bed and decorations to set the mood. There, Dolly finally reveals her intentions. She shares that George recently had a heart attack, and his doctor warned him that the next one might be his last. With that, the conniving wife hints to her lover that scaring her husband would likely end his life. Realizing what she wants, Harry walks off, refusing to kill for money. Because of this, Dolly switches tactics and climbs a nearby watchtower. While on the top, she begs him to help her, mourning that she can't be left alone in her task. Worried, Harry follows her but stresses that he won't do what she wants. Suddenly, she leaps off but rolls over the mound of sand below. Dolly gets up, unharmed and laughing. This amuses Harry, so when she returns to the tower, he agrees to make love to the woman again. On another day, a man joins Gloria by the lake, though he notices her crying alone. Desperate for help, the woman finally reveals that her friend who died ended her own life because of Sutton. Her friend was seeing a female teacher in secret, but Sutton found out and blackmailed her. Gloria went to comfort her friend Irene, unaware that the man spied on them and took photos of them in a vulnerable situation. He then used the images to threaten Irene, so she ended her life instead. After her death, Sutton then started blackmailing Gloria using her photos with Irene. This was why she defended the man and complied with his demands. Unable to take it any longer, Gloria plans to confess to George that she'd been stealing from his office to pay Sutton and cover his debt. She wants to come clean before the man reveals her photos to the town, but Harry discourages her. Instead, the angered man goes to Sutton's house alone that night and ambushes him. Despite Sutton grabbing random items for weapons, Harry gets the upper hand and beats him until he's knocked out. Meanwhile, Dolly calls Harry hoping to meet up with him. However, he doesn't answer her calls, so she goes to the gentleman's club later where she finds him. She confronts him about her husband's claim that Harry's seeing Gloria now. The man doesn't deny this, and the jealous woman declares that she'll make him regret choosing the younger lady. Dolly then rushes home, only for her husband to start rambling about how Harry's lucky to have Gloria. This irritates her further, so Dolly comes up with a plan. She starts seducing George, convincing him to let her tie him down on the bed. 
When he's at her mercy, Dolly suddenly reveals her relationship with Harry before sharing the bed with her husband one last time. The following morning, a bruised Sutton goes to the car dealership to buy another car, unable to scare him without Gloria noticing. Harry tends to him but points out that he hasn't paid his previous car in full yet. Still, Sutton insists on testing a new car since he can trade his old one for it. With this, Harry takes the man out for a test drive. As they do, Sutton reveals that he knows Harry wasn't helping with the fire before the robbery, so he threatens to tell the sheriff. When the other man moves to harm him, Sutton reveals a pistol and aims it at his neck. With his life and freedom on the line, Harry is forced to sign the new car to Sutton despite the man not paying for it. The man then visits Gloria in her office, and after he leaves, the woman tells her lover that he's demanded more money from her. Harry tells her not to pay him, but Gloria reveals that Sutton threatened her with a secret about Harry. Worried, she asks what the man meant, but her lover dodges the question before leaving. That evening, Harry retrieves the bag of stolen money and plants it inside Sutton's trunk, hoping that this will get rid of his enemy for good. While he does, he overhears that Sutton is with a woman, so he checks. The man immediately shoots in his direction when he enters, but the bullet grazes his lady companion on the cheek while Harry dodges it. The man then knocks Sutton out while the mystery woman runs and drives off. Still, Harry finds that she's left her adorned shoes and an envelope of money. The envelope has the car dealership's label, making him assume that the woman is Gloria. Pissed, Harry confronts Sutton for threatening the woman into paying him and sharing his bed. The man uses this to taunt his enemy before pulling out his gun. Harry sees this and wrestles the firearm from him. However, this leads him to accidentally pull the trigger and kill Sutton. Unwilling to go to jail, Harry covers his tracks and stages the place to make it look like Sutton ended his own life. He then disposes Gloria's shoes into the lake to avoid her being suspected. The next day, he surrenders some of the stolen money to the sheriff, claiming that Sutton used them to pay for the new car he bought yesterday. Only then does he learn that there's a reward money for turning in the bank robber, thus awarding him $25,000. With this, he invites Gloria to go to the Caribbean with him, even hinting that he'll marry her. The suspected woman says yes. Just then, Dolly calls Harry to reveal that her husband is dead. She then invites him to settle things. But Harry declares that he's leaving so he says goodbye. Unbeknownst to him, Gloria receives a call soon after. Moments later, Harry notices Gloria looking distraught. She learned from Dolly that George is dead, and as the finance officer of the dealership, Gloria agreed to meet with the widow to work on transferring the business to her. Harry tries to discourage her from this, but Gloria insists on tying up loose ends before they go away together. After that, the man accompanies his lover to meet with Dolly. As they wait by the door, however, he realizes that Gloria is still wearing her adorned shoes, confirming that she wasn't with Sutton last night. They then see Dolly, whose face has been scratched, revealing that she was the woman with Sutton last night. The widow then diverts the topic to their business. She gives Harry an envelope that supposedly contains a list of George's plans for his car dealership. Instead, it contains Dolly's sworn testimony about how Harry staged the fire to rob the bank and that Gloria had been stealing from her husband's office to pay Sutton who was blackmailing her. Dolly even claims that Gloria was with Sutton on the night he died, and this would make her a suspect in his death. As Harry reads, the widow reveals that she left a copy of the document to her attorney. Thus, he can't simply threaten her from making accusations. Making matters worse, Dolly hints to Gloria that Harry has revealed to her that the woman has been stealing from the office. This makes her think that her lover betrayed her, bringing Gloria to tears. With that, the younger woman leaves and refuses Harry's offer to accompany her. When she's gone, Harry confronts the conniving woman, realizing that Sutton couldn't have known that he wasn't at the fire before the robbery. This means that Dolly was the one who told him to blackmail Harry. Believing that she's won, Dolly orders him to beg her to marry him, noting that she still needs a man to care for her. Angered, Harry throws her down and chokes the woman instead. However, he can't bring himself to kill Dolly, knowing that her attorney will take her testimony to the police and get both him and Gloria in trouble. With this, Dolly smiles and commands the man to kiss her. With no choice, Harry complies, laughing maniacally as he accepts his doomed fate. Soon enough, he and Dolly drive away as the man surrenders himself to the woman who controls his fate.